These are people who had pursued Jesus from the Sea of Galilee or the Sea of Tiberias, as it is known. And over there, when Jesus, the, the crowd came over, Jesus whispered or contacted Philip and asked him, how can we take care of all these people? And the scripture tells us that Jesus himself knew what he was going to do. But he said it just to test Philip. And then looking around, Andrew came up as they asked him. And Andrew, the brother of Peter, told Jesus and Philip that we have only, there is a young man here who has only five barley loaves and two pieces of fish. Then Philip says, what is all this for such a huge crowd? And Jesus tells Philip, and he tells Andrew, ask the people to sit down. And he took the bread, he took the fish, and blessed them. After that, they were able to distribute and even have more than enough, collecting over 12 baskets full. In today's liturgy or today's Mass, we continue from the same chapter, that is chapter 6 of John's Gospel, and omitting verses 16 to 23, continuing from 24 onwards. And this is what was presented to us, that after the people, the crowd, had not seen Jesus and his disciples, they sat in a boat, or they sat in boats, and pursued them, and went to the other side of the lake, to Capernaum, where they found Jesus. In fact, when Jesus arrived, they really, they were there. And the experience of the people on the disciples, even on the lake, was quite an, uh, a phenomenon. So Jesus appeared to them and over there asked the people, how did they come over here? And so it is the encounter that has been presented to us in today's gospel. That is, the people ran over, went in different boats, that is those who had experienced Jesus in the Sea of Tiberias side and went to Capernaum and encountered Jesus again. So in the engagement, Jesus asked them. They asked him, Master, Jesus, when did you come here? And so Jesus tells them, it is not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the bread that was given to you, that you have asked it to come over here. And this reminds me as we were studying scripture, and I remember very well, Archbishop Peter Sapon, Emeritus Archbishop, explained to us that in Jesus' life, there were so many people who followed him, but they followed him with their own intentions and their own impressions. Some followed him because they were convinced of his message. Others uh, followed him out of curiosity. What is this man all about? And others followed him because of what they thought they could get from him, especially healing and also feed, feeding the people. So all these other people gathered and followed Jesus wherever he went. And they had heard about him. They had heard what he had done. They had heard what he had given to people. The lame were, was walking, the deaf were hearing, and so forth and so forth. So these people, as Jesus mentioned, you came here not because 
of the message but because of the food that you ate. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, as we gather today, the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time, the first reading of today also makes allusion to the desert experience of the people who had to flee from Egypt. And after complaining to Moses, the Lord poured barley loaves and food for the people. And so, when you make a comparison, in the gospel reading, Jesus also talks about it. That which they ate, that which Moses gave them, is quite different from that which I am giving you. And this is the message that Jesus offers us today. In comparing that the desert experience to that which Jesus himself offered them, he states, my father gives you the true bread from heaven. And he continues, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. And whoever believes in me will never thirst. These are the concluding words of today's gospel. And very often, this reading is used even in funeral liturgies. So, if Jesus is telling us that he is the bread of life, he therefore changes that physical food that the people ate and after which he states that they died. As for death, physical death, yes, we will all die. But Jesus is bringing a new sense of that death after even receiving his body and his blood. That even though we will die, spiritually and in unity with God, we will still be alive. And so the question that we need to ask ourselves, my dear brothers and sisters, is that just as the people ate in the desert, they said they died. Now Jesus says he gives himself to the people. He gives himself to us. And that is precisely that which we celebrate every liturgy and every Eucharistic celebration through the power of ordination of the priest that be able to convert the blood and the body into Jesus' body and blood for us. The question is, in what state do you and I receive this Eucharist? In what state do we prepare for this celebration and to participate in this Eucharist? Jesus assures us that yes, it is the food of life. And so when you and I eat it, our intention and understanding must be also towards eternal life. But that can only happen when this physical, earthly pilgrimage is also applied, that we live the life well to be able to earn that eternal life. And so the moment we re re deny ourselves of this, that is we destroy this possibility, it will become difficult for us also to have a share in that eternal life. And that is why I want you all to remember every now and then, even those of us who receive the Eucharist, who are qualified in that sense, to read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 27, to 33, the need, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 23, 27 to 33, the need for us to receive this Eucharist in a worthy manner. We want to thank God for today, for all the celebration that which is going to happen, and even those that have happened already. We have together commissioned and blessed our new role, the dual courage very impressive but this road would definitely have to lead us to enjoy life but not to as it were destroy life and that is why i intimated during the blessing that is the need for us to be careful not only here but even those of us who drive and even pedestrians those of us who may have to be walking that we are all careful 
on the roads, so that our roads will be safe. Our roads will be places that can bring us, take us and bring us back to our destinations. Today, I have to thank God also, seeing my young ones, my CYO, the Crusaders, and all of you mounting this parade for me. I'm so grateful to God that we are reviving this CYO concept. And then, Mubafu Adaroma, Ama Kasakura, Obani, Obema, Tifo, Kuni, Yere Tifwa, Mubafu, Ena, Ubiyahe, Nse Se Mubafu, Mwenimu, Mwadi Nkomo. Ebi Kura Tifye, Mubafu, Nede, Ede, Ede Kasa, Mwonti Se, Mikwe Jumabo, Enso, Mwonti, Mwonti, Efi, Bakumo, Neche Se, Fie, Nye, I for So, so we want to thank each and every one of you for participating in this mass and uh, for all that we have heard, for all that we are participating in today. Let us also be glad in the Lord. Let us live our Christian lives in a way that will be acceptable to the Lord. Understand the essence of the Eucharist. Understand what we receive. It is a spiritual food. It is not just a physical food. And if we understand it this way, just as Jesus has made us aware, it brings us to eternal life. May today's celebration Unite each and every one of us and make us that true Christian body and God's family that he wants us to be. Amen. Amen.